And we are back between two yachts on day one of the Miami Yacht Show 2018 with Mary Krieg. Krieg, Krieg that's Krieg. right. Krieg. Mm -hmm. And I know you're Australian, but it does sound South African. Ah, uh, it's actually German. Fourth generation doing, Australian. I'm like... <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> so we're in a very male dominated industry, mm -hmm. but you are the chief engineer on board. What's this one called? Nomadis. Nomadis. Nomadis, yep. Mm -hmm. How did you become a chief engineer? Well, um, yes, what you were saying before is very true. It's a very male-dominated industry, and yeah. but there are some great women in the industry um, working in um, in officer levels. You know, so we're female captains, female engineers, and um, although we're we're a minority, like you say. And absolutely, I mean, I, I know we've interviewed quite a few women on the show, and they mm -hmm. all say the same thing. It's they have to sort of put on this professional defamation to be more masculine, to yeah. be, get to command respect. They're using rough words and stuff like that, and it just seems a shame. Yeah, I disagree. Um, I think that empowered women don't need to um, be less feminine than they would normally yeah. to be in command, but they, y y you can't change the fact that you will always get, oh, you're here for the stewardess's position, you know. Um, but I've done everything on a boat, so I, praise the girls that work as hard as they do in the interior as well as all of we who go for a different level in the industry and do a lot of study and a lot of sea miles to get where we are. And did uh, you start out on sailing and that when you were younger? No, um, my interest in the ocean was diving. I'm a big scuba diver oh, okay. and um, dive master and I went to, you know, spent a lot of time on liverboard boats diving as guests, you know. And then um, I actually have a medical background, which I still um, am registered in, and um, obviously the medical officer on board as well. Um, but um, are you the only? Fe what is your official role? On the boat? Chief engineer. Are you the only female chief engineer in the industry? Uh, no, there are others coming up through the industry. Yes. Okay. I might be the oldest, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's definitely other, and I meet young women who've done engineering and not necessarily during the um, beginning in the yachting industry, um, and they're just doing great things. In fact, I had a, a, a fabulous girl relieve me for two weeks as I've just got, come back from Europe um, on holidays so, and speaking at a conference. So there are definitely great women out there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you, so, so diving? Di so diving, and then one medical. day, uh, and yeah. this is because you grew up in Australia? Or? I don't think it's because I grew up in Australia. I think it's just because I've always stretched my horizons and taken opportunities as they've arisen. And um, I did find with Australians though, they're very much more outdoors driven. I don't know why. Well, yes, we have the weather for it if we grow up in the north. And um, I love the outdoors, love the ocean, love looking after the ocean, love being on the ocean. So I think that, and, and we have sunshine. We're used to the sunshine. We're not scared of the sunshine like a lot of people these days. So. Um, that all helps, but I mean, when I first hit the industry, of course, I didn't have a lot of sea miles, and I came on. I've always been uh, heavily involved with food right from very young age. I'm not a chef, but I've cooked for some of the wealthiest people in the world as well on boats. So I mean, that just you're like an all-round one person. Well, what's wrong with captain then? You, is that the next? Uh, I'm also a captain. Right, I am okay. a captain as well. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but uh, chief engineer on this boat was the position that was available, and so that works really well. Yeah. Blimey. Okay. Yeah. Now we've just been. What was the captain's name? Ed. You're not husband and wife. No, we're not husband and wife, but we are okay. partners. Yeah. Lovers. Yes. Tell me you're saying. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've been together for eleven years. Um, uh, six years ago we went to Italy to build this boat for the owners that we had previously run a sailboat around the world for me. I joined it the last six years and Ed had been on it for ten years. So, um, right, that's we, the, with the same owners? Yes, so that's the same owners that we built this boat for and um, we've just done um, as much of around the world as they needed to do in a five year period and now and she's for sale. 36,000 miles? Yeah, we did 78,000 on the previous boat. So. We've done a lot of miles, and I think. Um, God, where did you go? Around the world. 
hugely yes. like this, like you know, around dot the world, dot dot. Dot, 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 around destination, um, weather. In a Bernetti. Uh, no, the previous seventy-eight thousand miles were on a uh, was on a Pedrick Design sailboat, and um, thirty-six thousand miles. Is that what you said? Thirty-six thousand yeah. miles on this one, on a plastic fantastic. On a plastic fantastic. <laughs> well, I mean, you couldn't. I mean, I never would have thought of Benetti. I mean, I don't. I never owned a super yacht, but I know. Yeah. Well, that's traditionally what the what the reputation is. Um, during the build, we obviously needed to make a few alterations to suit our specific cruising program. Oh, so you were the build crew as well. Yeah, yeah, build uh, captain engineer. So you got to be there, making sure that the wiring stayed the same colours all the way through. Well, sure yeah, they... more important things than that. But yes, things like um, uh, adding more anchor chain because we'd be anchoring in deep anchorages in Alaska and Galapagos and places like that. Um, you know, um, what else? Many other. That's just an example. The little details. The little details that uh, made us be able to do what yeah. what we did. But for me, it was about them not burying a pump that I couldn't find it. So when the pump stopped working, which they told me would never happen, which is ridiculous, of course they do. Um, <laughs> it'll never break. <laughs> um, that I could get to it and repair it. You know, I tell stuff you what, like that, that. That's testament to having a crew go through the build. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Wow. It makes a huge difference, and then yeah. of course when you come out the other end, you know you know where things are and how things run and what might be wrong, and you need to fix in warranty. Um. So, in terms of your skills, skill set, can you weld? Yes. Can you uh, wire electric? Yes. Fix fiberglass? Yes. God damn. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, fixed toilets, yes, yes. It's yeah. big, the big thing on marine toilets, they're very sensitive, so yeah. You end up doing quite a bit of plumbing as well, but <laughs> yeah, everything from air conditioning to, um, you know, for, first of all, running your main engines and your generators and your, your main plants, and then it's like running a five-star, seven-star hotel. You've got Absolutely. everything from food and beverage to hotel management of every, every level. And so. do you live on board? Yes, yes. So you work together, you live together, and you are together. Yes. There must be fights sometimes and disagreements. Um, no, not, just... not really fights, but you know, I um, ultimately have the final, <laughs> ultimately have the final <laughs> say because I'm the engineer. But you know, Ed's in command, and uh, he does a great job. He has wonderful leadership and management skills um, that he's had for many, many years before this boat and uh, lots of great experience um, running and coaching and training teams and so yeah it works well so if you if you can be captain will you ever be captain in this um, relationship oh yes definitely <laughs> so yes flip. yes uh we yes on this boat i haven't chosen to i've got enough with the engineering and um i don't really choose to take that role on i think it's great that i don't have to at this point you know um, you know, the industry, our, our program's been very intense. We've had liverboard owners um, that have guests on board. And so it's uh, been a very intense program because we're moving all the time. So there's new yeah. countries, there's new new countries, there's liverboard immigration, owns. there's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how much of a break do you normally get? When no. the boat sells, we'll have a nice break. <laughs> but they could be on for three months at the uh, time? They were on for nearly two and a half years straight. Yeah, so Good um, God. so I think that's that's a testament to how yachting varies in all its different capacities depending on what the boat's doing, and um, our program, of course, we've had to get to a point where the it's sustainable. The way we live is sustainable. Um, you know, with high end service and high end charter, um, that's not sustainable for 365 years of the year, obviously. No. So, um, but. Um, the boat is run very family style. The owners are older and what they are American. They have their dogs on board. They it's often just the two of them, and then they have family and guests come to um, you know special area, um, great destinations that we're in. Um, and during that time, it's it's um, the expectation is very high, but the service level is not as high as obviously high end charter and uh, it's very it's run on a family style basis so they like to 
have us as, as their um, companions and their friends on yeah. board. So, you know, it's not unusual for um, crew to have a glass of wine with the owners at night and for us to dine together. We all eat the same food, which is very good. Great chef, uh, looks after us all, kind of. Kind yes, of. <laughs> we have to look after ourselves though as well, don't we? I've never heard of I used, well, I have, I've met one captain a couple of weeks ago who had stayed with the same owners for 30 years. I, I, I thought that was a, I thought five years was kind of like right. the, the norm. So you've broken that norm. Um, and then you live with the owners for years at a time. And then the boats, an Italian boat that's traveled <laughs> one and a half times around the world. I mean, you've broken all sorts of records there, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't look at breaking records. That's not why we're doing it. We, it's, I think the boat industry, obviously, it's a luxury industry and it's about making people's dreams come true. And yeah. um, so... Well, this is what some, they were saying in some of these Supiot conferences now. People, mm. instead of just buying boats just to have parties and you know, mm. they're doing what your owners have done. Right. Going off and seeing the world places that you can't go without a boat yeah yeah so I mean the last um, I guess the most I mean the, just the last before we brought the boat back to America the the last 12 months just included um, Alaska which is phenomenal to be in a Benetti yeah I have uh, videos of cutting nice, through the ice no it's not nice an icebreaker and of course you have to be very careful and we the the, the great video is very impressive but it's just um, surface block ice there's no um you know um icebergs as in oh, okay. significant ice under the water i mean there is but where we were navigating we were clear um that's got to be exciting as oh well. it's brilliant in fact you know like i said you can come up and have a look at that video it's it's just okay. great um so yes in the last 12 18 months before we came back we did alaska have to in a lifetime galapagos another have to in a lifetime um, so these are bucket Polynesian. list items, Zach. Alaska, Galapagos. Galapagos. Um, Passage? We didn't. Yeah. Um, Only a few people have ever done that. Yeah. I would not take this up there. No? Yeah. Well, you need a little little ice ice breaking, I think. Oh, you mean up across the top, right? Yeah. Um, the it's Galapagos, the French Polynesia. Oh, my God. Just absolutely beautiful, especially for, especially for people who love the ocean, the sun you know, the reefs. And you've got diving equipment and everything on Yep, board. we have diving equipment, paddle boards, surf, So you are, in some ways, you're living your ideal life. I think um, on this boat, we, um, the, like I mentioned earlier, the owners are older, but they still almost want to do what, what they could if they were our age. So yes, we go on crew expeditions, take helicopters and land on top of glaciers and walk glaciers. We go on incredible diving trips. We, you know, video it all for them, bring it back and show it to them on their TV. They're standing at the, the back of the boat waving us goodbye as we head off with our dive tanks and they're looking for us and our stories when we come back to the boat. So it has been a very unique and very special program when it comes to crew involvement. Um, the crew have had great opportunities to see and do things that they probably Never wouldn't as individuals. Mm. Good God. So if you've got, uh, for women who are technically minded, mechanically capable and want to come into the industry. Get a job on a boat doing whatever, get some sea miles and then choose what you want to do and go and do your Even study. Even if it is being a stewardess to start with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just like start. I said, um, uh, you know, I started on smaller boats and I was cooking and cleaning and you know I've done it all. <laughs> so um, knowing what life on a boat is and choosing that that's what you want to do I think is a great start for you know coming to the industry with previous water sports experience, small boats, diving, snorkeling, just like being on the water that's a great advantage as well. Blimey. So now this boat is for sale or are you chartering it? No this is for sale. So it's only been private, it's never been chartered. So what do they want to do? Yeah, yeah another one? No, they're actually retiring from boats. They're, this is their probably oh, so you'll their be last out of a boat. Job. Well, not necessarily. There's always <laughs> a job around the corner in this industry, but also you know there's many opportunities. The new owner might want the crew as well to go with the boat. Um, this is the end of the era then for you with this with these owners. Yes, it would seem so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that must be quite sad. Well, no, I think um, I think we've done exactly what we set out to do and have, ex have exceeded 
exceeded their expectations, exceeded our own expectations, and certainly um, met the expectations of the boat. So it's it's a very um, satisfying feeling, and um, it's a big world out there, and yachting's not the only thing that there is to do. Yeah. So I mean, there's big life out there, and um, ready for new starts and new adventures. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it's great talking to you. I love your blue Yetis, yes. my favourite colour. And you've, and got a, you've got a blue Yeti as well? No, I don't, but I have a little, we have blue cups oh, the, and the light, cups. light green cups, so yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's nothing, another Yeti fan. <laughs> no, nothing better than heading off in the tender with a big G&T or a big something or other on ice in a Yeti, so <laughs> as the sun goes down just before you start the evening with guests on board. Wonderful. Well, it was a real pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. You're